I love this next story that I'm going to talk to you guys about here. Um, and I love it particularly because there are people who I respect who really disagree with my analysis on this, but that makes it fun. That makes it fun. That makes it interesting. So uh, Trump was doing some sort of a rally. I don't remember which state he was campaigning in, but he's trying to get the Republicans elected. And um, he took this underhanded shot at Ron DeSantis. Take a look at this. Party for the nomination like nobody's ever seen before. Let's see. There it is. Trump at 71. Ron DeSanctimonious at... 10%. Mike Pence at 7 Oh, Mike's doing better than I thought. Liz Cheney, there's no way she's at 40 for the Okay, so a couple things to say about this. First of all, he's literally citing, like, some bullshit truth social poll or Trafalgar poll, like, the least accurate polling in the country, because he has himself at 70 or 71%. Nonsense. In, in actual polls, he's at about 50%. Okay, so he's giving himself 20 extra. This is what Trump always does. Like, he will literally do a Twitter poll and then be like, 98% approval rating. What do you guys think about that? And it's like, bro, that's not, you, that, you can't do it. Like, you can't, like, poll your own followers on Twitter. This is back when he had Twitter. Um, and, and say, like, it's scientific. It's, it's totally accurate. No, that's not true. So anyway, he's citing a poll is totally bogus. It's about 50% uh, for Trump. And it's about 30% for DeSantis. So, yes, Trump is still a huge favorite. But he's definitely overstating the case. Now, here's the reality, though. He knows he's doing that. And why is he calling Ron DeSantis Ron DeSanctimonious? Because he's threatened by him. He's threatened by him. So if he can't get another Republican to bend the knee, then, hey, you're my enemy. And I'm going to go for your fucking jugular. Now, here's where um, my analysis differs from many others, right? Because... I was one of the biggest proponents for the longest time of this Teflon Don theory, because there was a time where I thought it was true, where basically it's like the more you attacked him, the better he did. There was always like a backlash effect. And I felt like the mainstream media was so bad at attacking Trump that they did make him more powerful because they'd always find like my go to example. of This was back when he was campaigning in 2016. They made a big deal that he gave a speech and he was talking about TPP, Trans-Pacific Partnership, that trade deal. And he said, the TPP, it's going to rape us. It's going to rape us. And the media did, like, a two-day meltdown over the fact that he used the word rape. And, you know, it's like, oh, what do, what do sexual assault survivors think of this, bro? And I remember watching that thing, you fucking idiots. This is going to help him. Because, like, if his argument is your jobs are being outsourced and that's bad, people are going to be like, I agree with that. And that's the core of what he was trying to say, right? But they just ignored that and said, oh, he used naughty words. Naughty man. Poop face. Poop mouth. Stop it. And so that made him stronger. So... They created this Teflon Don effect where, like, the more they attacked him, the better he did in the polls. And, you know, he got, what's that thing? He got billions of dollars worth of free advertising. There was some study because the media would talk about him 24-7. And even though the media was going after him, it kind of helped him because it was just like, it, it would just build up this resistance to the media narrative, right? So there was a time when Teflon Don was true. It's no longer true. It's not like literally anything he says and does is going to help him. That's not the way it works. That's not the way the world works. Like... Things are different. You have to evaluate them based on their own standards, right? And so, in this instance, he's going after Ron DeSantis, but the big mistake he's making, in my opinion, is you're throwing the first punch. You're going on offense. People don't like that. You know how I know that? Because I remember back in 2015 and 2016 when Donald Trump was running for office. What a lot of people didn't realize about Trump, which I took special note of, is that Trump never threw the first punch. He was always a counterpuncher, which is why he could sometimes get away with being a massive, colossal asshole. Because if it was the other person who opened the floodgates and threw the first punch, there's something about that where people go, ah, well, I mean, you kind of had a fucking coming. <laughs> like, maybe you shouldn't have fucking went after him, and then he wouldn't have gone after you, right? And I'm telling you, go back, watch the old debates. This classic Donald Trump, this is what he would always do. He was a counterpuncher. He's not going to go after you. If When he was running that Republican primary, he wasn't going to go after anybody. But if they went after him, oh, then his glove's off, bitch. Then it's like, you know, Ted Cruz's dad killed JFK and his wife is fucking ugly and Rand Paul. His look, there's a lot of subject matter to go after right there. You understand what I'm saying? So, like, I think people on the right and the left, both, there's something about a counterpuncher that we like more than an obnoxious, go on the offense, 24-7 person who sometimes does things that are uncalled for, says things that are uncalled for. So Trump always, always, always counterpunched. This is not counterpunching. Ron DeSantis has said fuck all about Donald Trump. He said nothing. And by the way, phenomenal strategy from Ron DeSantis there. Why? Because look, it's still Trump's party, right? So that, that's a fact. You're not going to change that. So what do you do? You kind of got to ride it out. 
I'm not going to say anything pro-Trump. I'm not going to say anything anti-Trump. I'm going to position myself as the next logical choice. He's positioning himself as like, this is the smarter, more clever, um, more politically intelligent version of Trump. That's what he's done. Now, he's built that myth about himself. And guys, it's fucking landed. It's worked. It's worked. Nobody rides that wave of right-wing culture war outrage better than Ron DeSantis. All of his little shitty fucking PR stunts, which, by the way, are objectionable. <laughs> you know, like the fucking arresting people for voter fraud when it wasn't really voter fraud. Like, all that stuff is terrible, right? But it, that taps into the fucking vein of the, of the far right and what they want to see. And so, as a direct result of this, well, what do we have here, guys? Look at this. So this is from Ron Filipkowski. Right-wingers not happy about Trump attacking DeSantis. Huh, interesting. It's almost like when you counterpunch, they like it, but when you throw the first punch, they don't like it, especially when it's going after one of their allies. Okay, so here we go. Matt Walsh says, Also, nice job launching your public attack against the most popular conservative governor in America. Um, three days before the midterms, when we're all supposed to be showing a united front. So this is him saying, like, look, you're not a fucking team player, bro. You gotta be a team player. What the fuck is wrong with you? All right, more. Quote from major GOP donor. Quote, you've got Lindsey Graham campaigning with America First, endorsed candidates, and hard-right donors supporting Dr. Oz. The only assholes attacking Republicans are Liz Cheney and Donald Trump. These guys hate, 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 hate Liz Cheney. They view her as a traitor. And now Donald Trump is being brought up in the same conversation as Liz Cheney? More. What an idiot. DeSantis is far more effective is a far more effective leader of the right than Trump was. If, that is, you expect a leader to get a lot done, rather than just talking about it and owning the libs. More. I think I got one more here for you. Ian Miles Chung. Bad-mouthing the most effective governor, who's pushed nothing but conservative wins, is a bad look for Trump. No idea who he's taking advice from, but it's bad advice. Okay, so now... The, the reaction I hear to this when I bring up this point that Trump is misstepping by going after DeSantis is like, look, this is just like the right-wing intelligentsia online. And they are not representative of, like, the Republican base. I disagree with that. I think the right-wing intelligentsia online, they have their finger on the pulse of that far-right base. Um, I think whatever they say, whatever their analysis is, sort of reflects the immediate reaction of that right-wing base. And so, if you say, well, these are literally like right-wing, you know, Twitter trolls. Okay, well, what do we have here? Oh, well, look at that. Fox News. Conservatives turn on Trump for attacking Ron DeSantis ahead of midterms. Quote, what an idiot. DeSantis is among the most popular and successful Republicans in the country. He's fucking up, man. Look, Trump is fucking up. Now, but here's the thing. Because Trump is politically more clever than people give him credit for. So what happened? Trump sees and hears all in his circle. And so he saw the giant backlash after he did this. So what happened the day after? He went and he did a rally and he mentioned like, we're going to reelect, uh, you know, the wonderful governor Ron DeSantis. He's had some shit like that. And again, this is Trump. He's an A-B tester. He'll throw something out there. If the crowd eats it up, oh, I'm going to use this every time, right? Like, we're going to build a wall. Yeah. And, and Mexico is going to pay for it. Yeah! And he goes, oh, yeah, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that one every single time. Is this what you fucking idiots like? Fine, I'll do this. <laughs> and so, but this was an example of, like, fucking Ron, Ron de Sanctimonious. Boo! Boo! Did I say that? What I meant was, the wonderful governor, we're gonna get him reelected. It's gonna be phenomenal. It's gonna be incredible. It's gonna be great. <laughs> like, he just, he just pivoted, right, in real time. So, but is he smart enough to, to kind of stay, stay on this path and not obnoxiously go after the person who is the heir apparent. I don't know. We'll have to see. But look, it is not, it was not an isolated thing. It was across the board. People were like, what the fuck is he doing? He's doing what, you know, this is Donald Trump. The idea he cares about some conservative movement and the future of the Republican Party or the future of the country is preposterous. This guy is all about himself first and foremost, right? So it's funny that anybody ever thought it would go a different way. But look, he, he adjusted, and let's see if he stays on that path. If I'm giving advice to Ron DeSantis, don't open your fucking mouth, son. Don't say a goddamn word. Don't say a word. Don't go after Trump. We also got word that um, his allies behind the scenes were reaching out to Trump's allies, and we're like, what the fuck are you doing? What are you doing? 
And uh, maybe that had something to do also with Trump kind of reeling it in a little bit for now. But man, I am here for this eventual war between Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. <sighs> Fact of the matter is, yes, I agree with the analysis that Trump is likely to... Let's say Trump and DeSantis both run in the primary. It's Trump is more likely to win than DeSantis, of course. Of course. Um, but, but, Trump is indicted. Trump is convicted. Trump spends time behind bars. Well, then no. Then he's not going to win. It's, it's, it's done. It's over and done for Trump. So, um, anyway, it'll be really interesting to see this thing play out. But, look, if you ask me, I think Trump is definitely misstepping. If you want to see me and Crystal Ball interview legends like Noam Chomsky, Cornell West, and more, subscribe to Crystal Kyle and Friends on Substack. $5 a month gets you the video version a day early. Remember, we take zero ad dollars for this podcast. Or you can sign up on Substack for free and get the audio version a day later. Link in the video description box below.